Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, Lord. In the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent from God to a town of Galilee called Nazareth to a virgin betrothed to a man named Joseph of the house of David. In the virgin's house was Mary. Coming to her, he said, Hail, full of grace, the Lord is with you. But she was greatly troubled at what was said and pondered what sort of greeting this might be. The angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary. You have found favor with God. Behold, you will conceive in your womb and bear a son, and you shall name him Jesus. He will be great and be called the Son of the Most High. The Lord God will give him the throne of David, his father, and he will rule over the house of Jacob and of his kingdom. There will be no end. Mary said to the angel, How can this be, since I have had no relations with a man? The angel said to her in reply, The Holy Spirit will come upon you. The power of the Most High will overshadow you. Therefore, the child to be born will be called Holy, the Son of God. And behold, Elizabeth, your relative, has also conceived a son in her old age. And this is the sixth month for her who is called barren, for nothing will be impossible for God. Mary said, Behold, I am the handmaid of the Lord. May it be done to me according to thy word. Then the angel departed from her. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. This is the infamous June Downey gingerbread cookie to which I had received horrible nightmares. Look at that. He's wearing a bathing suit, a wacky bathing suit. This is the most bizarre gingerbread cookie I've ever seen in my life. June Downey, your children should be ashamed of yourselves for no particular reason whatsoever. At least you know I opened the gift. So there you go. God bless June Downey's kids and grandkids. Wanted to, um, is my reflection today, tell you that I, yesterday, had to get up at 3 o'clock in the morning. I got no sleep last night. I was up at 3 o'clock in the morning, and I was running throughout the day. I have to explain to you why. On Tuesday, I received a phone call from Nick Skokna, my potato chip guy. He said to me, I have two pallets of food that I would like to give to your community for Christmas. He essentially has given me all kinds of various chips, and I think it's like 70 cases of Doritos, nacho cheese, spicy dip, and jalapeno ranch dip. And for those who are here, I still have about 50 cases of those sitting in the garage right now. I got all kinds of small bags of ruffles and Doritos and all kinds of cool stuff, Tostitos, Tostitos scoops, you know, those things where you can really hold on to the dip well. So Nick tells me he got two pallets of those he wanted to give to the parish, but I needed to pick them up on Tuesday. So I got a nine-foot van on Tuesday morning to go get that two pallets of chips. I figured a nine-foot van would kind of take care of the needs that we had. So I got the van, and I ended up driving up to Manuka, Illinois, because Maria Jankowski wanted me to go on my cheesecake run to go give the cheesecakes to the people of the area. I was going to go up and get the chips and the dips and all those kind of things. And then I had confessions over at St. Joseph's Church in Joliet, Illinois. I was on my way to Manuka when Nick Skokna called me again. And he said, Father, I made a mistake. There are not two pallets of chips. There are seven. Now, the way that Frito-Lay works is that Frito-Lay makes sure that you have to take everything they give you or they won't give you again. So now I have to figure out how to pick up seven pallets of chips in a nine-foot van that I rented from U-Haul. Now, this is me, me being stupid and all that kind of stuff. So I decided... I was going to rent a 20-foot U-Haul truck in Shanahan, Illinois, which meant 
I had to drive my van to Shanahan, pick up the 20-foot truck that I also have to rent, drive to Manuka, pick up all seven pallets of what he gave me, and then drive back to Mements, drop them off, and then drive the 20-foot truck to Shanahan, Illinois, to drop that off, pick up the nine-foot van, and drive that back to Kankakee, where I would have to drop it off because it was due yesterday morning at 10.30 a.m. So now I'm thinking to myself, I have just rented two trucks for the cost of two trucks, plus the gasoline that is in the two trucks, and how am I going to make all of this work? So I'm bringing this 20-foot truck with me. Now I have to go on the cheesecake run. I have to go see Dinah Archambault, one of the appellate court judges in Joliet, Illinois. I'm driving up to her house in a 20-foot U-Haul truck, and they're wondering what's going on. I'm going to visit uh, Sue Cordano, who is living in a gated community over in Shorewood, Illinois, with a monster-sized truck, and she's wondering who's moving her out of her house. I'm going to visit all these people, and I'm giving them the cheesecakes, and every time I visit them with a cheesecake, we're going to sit down, we're going to have stories. So I'm having these stories with these people when all of a sudden these individuals had decided they were going to gift me. Now, i got to preface this by saying with all the uh, Christmas bonuses I've been given and all the extra stuff I had been giving, my credit card bill ran to about $5,800 plus the iPhone that Maria Jankowski told me we needed to get Julian. So by the time the end of this month would be over, my credit card bill would be at about $9,000 at the end of this month. So now I'm sitting there thinking to myself, I'm not going to pay for $9,000 in a credit card bill, but I've decided that God takes care of me. Somehow, some way, if it's a just cause, God will take care of me. Through my travels yesterday, I ended up getting a $10,000 check from one of my people delivering cheesecakes. And I would gotten other gifts from other people took care of things. So now I'm thinking to myself, I can take care of all of this, and I can feed the people at the University of St. Francis, and I can take care of the food pantries in the area, and since I had the room in the 20-foot truck, the poor Claire's gave me all this liturgical furniture, including all of their chairs that they used in their chapel that we donated to Camino y Esperanza over at St. Anne, Illinois. So I'm driving back here, and I get back here at 9 o'clock at night when our friends who did all the cooking of the hot dogs and hamburgers for our parish picnic, a member of Camino y Esperanza, Joe Bravo, came at 9 o'clock at night, and they emptied the truck with all these things, including a second battery-powered wheelchair that I had in the garage. So I just wrote this note on Facebook. I was being funny about this whole thing. And it was a poem that I wrote for the people who I was serving. Six days before Christmas, some people gave to me for the needy. Eight pallets of Doritos dip, a hundred cases of junk food, a ton of donated food that the poor Claire's gave me, donated altar furniture, a bunch of holy statues, five pictures of saints. Four wheelchair batteries, two electric wheelchairs, a 2013 Chevy Equinox with 180,000 miles, but no partridge in a pear tree because they're all a bunch of cheapskates. Merry Christmas. I put that out there on Facebook. Now, all of a sudden, yesterday, I am getting one phone call after another from people in this neighborhood saying to me, is that vehicle still available? Are those wheelchairs still available? Is their food still available? We have been dishing out and doling out all kinds of chips and dips and wheelchairs and cars. And by the end of this weekend, I guarantee you that garage is going to be empty of everything that got donated to us. St. John of the Cross, at the end of your life, you will be judged by your love. That's the deal. It's not the beginning of your life. It's not the middle of your life. At the end of your life, you will be judged by the manner in which you love. The scripture readings today 
talk about an evil example and talk about the perfect saintly example. Ahaz, the king, who was so despicable that he disregarded God, he disregarded Isaiah, and he ended up living such a horrible life as most of the kings did in the Old Testament that both he and his wife Jezebel saw their end in a very horrendous way. Isaiah warned them, Micah, Amos, Hosea, uh, they all warned the people about living the true life or they were going to lose what they had, and that they lost. The perfect example is in today's gospel, the one who became the first tabernacle of the Catholic Church, who stated to the angel Gabriel, I am the handmaid of the Lord. Let it be done to me according to thy word. When we act more like Mary than like Ahaz, when we act more like Christians than the secular world, then we have a chance for heaven. I was writing to the University of St. Francis, and it dawned on me that the University of St. Francis, who pushes Franciscan values, was saying to me, there's not enough of a Franciscan presence in the courses that we teach. So I wrote them back, and I said, you know, for the last three years, I have offered every student in my university an opportunity to receive extra credit on their exams if they memorize the prayer of St. Francis. I said, here is a person, every year I do this in my university courses, I tell the story of St. Francis and the Sultan, about how during the Crusades in Israel, the same location where we have the same wars, that two individuals from two different religious traditions came together and found a way to make friends with each other. And for that one brief moment of time, we found peace. I said, get rid of the first word of that prayer. Get rid of the phrase, O Divine Master. And every word in that prayer essentially is the way that every student in the university should live. I said to the university, if you really want to push Franciscan values, then before any student walks out of the doors of that university with a graduation certificate in hand, they should learn the words, Lord, make me an instrument of your peace. When there is hatred, let me sow love. Where there is injury, pardon. Where there is doubt, faith. Where there is despair, hope. Where there is darkness, light. And where there is sadness, joy. O divine master, grant that I may not so much seek to be consoled as to console, to be understood as to understand, to be loved as to love. For it is in giving that we receive. It is in pardoning that we are pardoned. It is in dying that we are born to eternal life. And if you don't like the prayer of St. Francis, since this happens to be the parish in which we live, try this one, the breastplate of St. Patrick. Christ with me, Christ before me, Christ behind me, Christ in me, Christ beneath me, Christ above me, Christ on my right, Christ on my left, Christ where I stand, Christ where I sit, Christ when I arise, Christ in the heart of every man who thinks of me, Christ in the mouth of everyone who speaks of me, Christ in the eye that sees me, Christ is in every ear that hears me. Salvation is of the Lord, salvation is of the Christ. You want to talk about what Christmas is about. It's about sacrificing for the sake of being like Christ. That's the way we get to heaven, and that's the way we understand what we are doing here today. We try to teach it at the university. We try to teach it to every needy person that comes to receive what we have. There have been so many good examples of faith that I have been trying to follow, and I got to do my part. And whenever God sees a cause that may be noble, God helps me out. At least I think he does. I ask that God do the same for you, that we open our hearts so that Christ is all around us, so that when we give, we learn that God, we receive from God. When we are pardoning, we are pardoned. When we're dying, we are born to eternal life. He was born to die for our sins. Let us do the same for the people that we meet. This is our prayer.